uh, some other yeah. tribe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please say. Well. Okay, Gordon. Okay. Uh, let me see. Where were we now? We were just talking about. We were talking about how when you were at school, how Indians were accepted, but not fully. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you, um, about how many were in school when you were going to the West Pier, Indian students? Indians? I would guess, I would guess maybe 15, mm -hmm. 12 to 15. Now you felt that there wasn't a really... Uh, acceptance, it really seems acceptance like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why, like I say, we didn't go to the dances, you know, we shied away from them. And maybe it's our own fault, maybe as Indian people sometimes we do. Uh, kind of keep to ourselves or we're a little backward sometimes and I think we probably felt like uh, well like we wouldn't be accepted that well you know and it wouldn't be fun mm -hmm. okay. uh, when but did the you leave? teachers when were fine though when did we you leave West Decker? when did I graduate? in 1954 mm -hmm. and uh, then where did you go? Then I worked in Green Bay at the Green Bay Box Company, and uh, the people my mother worked for owned the company, the Cresses. So that was how I got in there. And I worked there until I got married, which was in um, 1957. Right. And did you, um, and did you just stay home and work, do housework, or? Then I, yes, in fact, I worked with my mother at um, the Cress's home. Mm -hmm. I see. And then we later, um, my ex-husband and I moved to Chicago. And we came home every weekend. We built a house out here. And um, I went to beauty school at that point and um, got my um, certificate. And I worked for Regis Beauty Salon for many years. And then we adopted a boy, my son Gregory. And so I quit work for about six years till he went to school. And those are the only years I never worked, so I'm looking forward to retirement. <laughs> He'll now be 28 this August. Wow. But Did after beauty you? school, a part-time, those years that I stayed home with him, since I had my license to do um, beauty work, hairdressing, then I worked for Mrs. Cress again, my mother's boss, at the house. And I was like her private hairdresser. That that kept me going, you know. I mean, it was fun, and uh, I was with my mother all day, and I could take Greg right there, and it was it was neat. I got paid well, so I didn't have to go out and work either. <laughs> when did you start working for the tribe? I started for the tribe in 1985. In what August. capacity? What I'm doing right now, benefit specialist for the elderly. Tell us about that. What is that all about? Okay, the, my job consists of all getting all the public benefits or anything that the elderly are entitled to that they're not even aware of a lot of times. And um, it, public benefits is like um, maybe some didn't realize they were entitled to SSI. Maybe they had a low Social Security income. And when I started working, many of them weren't re didn't realize that they could get an additional supplement to their income. So... That was a big thing that I started when I first came on. Uh, but any benefits are entitled to, like we do income taxes for them now, Homestead. And um, if there's like uh, overpayments in Social Security or SSI, I appeal them and usually usually I can win the case. And that saves a lot of money. I My first case was um, a gentleman whose wife was in the nursing home. And he was in his early 60s and he got an overpayment of I don't know, it was close to $1,000, and he just, like most of our Indian people I've noticed with working with the elderly, they just give up and say, I'll pay it, and that's it, and I don't have to bother with them. Well, I came in on my job, and this was about only two months I was working, but um, I worked on his case. That was my first big one, and I won that one, so he didn't have to pay that back. Yep. So it's a, it's a good feeling to, to help the elderly, and uh, so whatever they're entitled to, I'm there. And right now I do wills for the elderly, and I do all legal forms. Uh, I work closely with the attorneys, and um, I do a lot of legal forms that other benefit specialists in the county can't do. And I get my training through a, a lawyer from Madison, though, for all the updates on 
you know, government issues. Mm -hmm. And where are you located? Yeah, at the Oneida Senior Center. And it'll be so 12 years in August. 12 years. Mm -hmm. mm. And I never worked for the tribe before that. And it's real interesting. <laughs> okay. oh. what, uh, what's your response when uh, somebody says, uh, what is an Oneida Indian? I was never asked that. What is an Oneida Indian? Well, you have to be four fours Oneida blood to be on the rolls, and uh, I don't know what else to say about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or do you mean what is it like, or what is it? Well, we're just looking for your response, not mm -hmm. what I'm thinking of. Well, I'm proud to be Oneida, and I see the Oneida tribe as one of the greatest um, um, financial wise they help their people and I know there's a lot of negativism on some th points you know but um, since I've been working with the tribe and with the elderly if you go to the right people with the right attitude they help the people a lot mm -hmm. okay. what does it mean by the 52 cents a year oh that's the old the old per capita maybe <laughs> I remember of getting that 52 cents a year and the elders now, they talk about that too, how that's all they used to get. and um, But they were happy to get it. But it's you know what you got it for? Fun to talk about. Do you know what, why they received that? Well, I, under, I understood it was um, the government when they took away. Um, actually, I can't explain that one, no. Mm -hmm. Can we'll you have, tell me? We'll have, we'll have to see if we can find out what they okay. answer, right? Okay. What about the uh, hospital? Do you remember the hospital? Oh, yes, I remember the hospital. I remember um, Ernie Smith used to live there and his family. Um, and Carlton and Myron went to school with us at the mission, their children. Uh, I remember Blanche lived there, Blanche McGluster. And um, I remember going playing over there, Barbara Post and I, and there was a basement down there, but I don't think it had doors on. I think it was wide open. And, uh, but it was never, uh, someone said one time that was a spooky building. We never thought so. It was a fun place to go. And I guess, uh, I can't remember the other families that lived there, but it was kind of the only place in Oneida that had groups of, you know, different families living in like one apartment. One apartment. Time, yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Right. What kind of advice would you give to the, uh, to the young people that are coming up? Well, they're going to be looking at this video in years to come. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess the thing that I always push is that they should uh, realize at a young age that they have to invest for the future. You know, I myself, I like to talk about IRAs, CDs, and let them know that there's a way to save, you know. And um, I think um, they're spoiled today, you know. I think us as parents, we want them to have what they want, and um, it makes it too easy sometimes. But if you instill in the young people now that they have to worry about their future, they're going to train their children that way too. And um, of course, respect for their elders. That should be taught by all families. Mm -hmm. Do you remember your dad saying that you were spoiled? No, no, he never did. No, no. Okay. He taught me to respect my elders. I remember that. So I, maybe that's why I'm working as I am right now. I'm just wondering which which generation wasn't spoiled. Oh, we continue to move back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, that's <Okay>. true. <laughs> uh, well, we want to thank you. Thank okay. And, uh, yeah. Um, just one thing. Did you want to ask her about any home remedies or any recipes? We haven't asked about recipes. I don't know if I do or not. I don't think she so. She told me not to ask her, her about <laughs> cornbread. Okay. <laughs> do you have any special recipes? <laughs> I have a special recipe for pickles. Oh, you do? Mm -hmm. Do you want to share that with us? They're refrigerator pickles. Yeah. And you don't have to. You put to. them in the refrigerator. <laughs> you do. You do. You clean all your 
pickles, okay. cucumbers up, and a certain, you get a certain size, not the real large, but not the miniature ones either. Mm -hmm. And you put onions with that and green pepper and your vinegar, and you let them sit in there. And then um, you drain that off, and you make the same solution over, and you can add a little sugar if you want and your salt. And you put them in the, you let them sit out 24 hours, and then they're not canned, so they don't have to be sealed. You can put them into any kind of container, and they'll keep in the refrigerator all winter. Hmm. What about um, the easy remedies? Do you, did your folks use any home remedies, uh, you know, like uh, medicines? Mm, and no, and no. Yeah. Again, at firms, I never seen that. And, Just um, little uh, snops here and there. Huh? I heard. <laughs> That's what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else that you might want to share with us that you can think of? Well, I, I remember Dr. Hill. She uh, brought me into this world. I don't remember that day, but um, again, uh, the firms every day. I didn't like milk. And, well, maybe it was every other day I had to ride my bike to Rob Elmer's farm, get my own. I had my own little tin can with a cover, and I balanced that on my bike, and I had to drink two quarts a week at every meal. And I never liked milk, but I drank it all the years. I appreciate it now because I have good teeth and I have good health. And but uh, and then I could go to Dr. Hill's and I, I'd make any excuse. I'd tell my aunt that I, I didn't feel that I had a belly ache or I had a headache. And she, she knew it all the while, but I didn't know it. She'd say, okay, go see Dr. Hill. So I'd ride my bike down there. And of course, Dr. Hill, when you left there, she always gave you, she had a little candy jar. So, and she knew too what I came for. <laughs> It was fun, though, because I always recall going to her house, and I can, I can picture that old house. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but... Um, she lives there. Yeah, and she had all her medicines on her um, dresser. Her old crank telephone on the wall, yeah. So there's a lot of good memories about her. Mm -hmm. Well, good. I want to thank you, and uh, can we feel free to call upon you to help us with...